So peace family, this is Talib Saber, I'm the attorney for the Saber firm. And today we have a very special guest. Um, this brother, when I went to Brazil last year, he afforded me an opportunity to show me around to some places and tell me just about the history and the culture of uh, Brazil as a whole, but Salvador uh, specifically. So just to give you a little bit of background about this brother, this is uh, Gabriel Swahili. He's a husband, father, and an Afrocentric community educator who works in the field of race relations with an extensive experience with grassroots black movements in Brazil. You know, now he's an assistant professor in the University Universidad uh, Federal de Bahia, UFBA, where he teaches educational public policies and affiliated member of the Department of Africology and African St American Studies at Temple University. So without further ado, Brother Gabriel Swahili. Kim and Swahili, what's good, brother? Yeah, I'm fine. Good, good. How are you? I'm good, brother, I'm good. So thank you for, for coming on, you know, and, and building with us here. And it's so interesting because when you think about the so-called African American, people only think about United States, you know, but technically an African in America would be someone from Brazil too. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, talk a little bit just about, you know, your background and then uh, what's going, what you do specifically in Brazil. Okay. Um, I'm born and raised here in Salvador, Bahia. We have uh, almost blacker city outside Africa. Salvador have perhaps eight five percent of black people here, and I grew up in a working class family uh, in the hoods here in Salvador. Um, and my father was directly involved with um, the black movement here. Uh, it was, it, it's, it's called MNU, Movimento Negro Unificado, United Black Movement. It was an organization that was founded here in Brazil uh, in the late 70s. Uh, and uh, in my teens, I was involved with community work, um, community school, co community schools, and in the university I found and joined the black students groups, and we had a lot of uh, community work here. Uh, the neighborhood where I grew up is called Kabula. Kabula is in the center of the Salvador, in the geographic center, but it's a, a poor community here. And this word Kabula ha, uh, has its origin in Kikongo language. So uh, it means, some people say it means sacred. Uh, because there are a uh, quilombo there, uh, maroon. Mm -hmm. And then we um, start a movement called Quilombo Kabula, uh, that uh, where we work over a decade, uh, help black students, black, black youth to get access to university and doing uh, communitarian organizational work uh, in this region, in, th in two neighborhoods, uh, in Gomadeira and Mata Escura, mm. two neighborhoods in the Kabula area. So that's it. Uh, now I'm working in the university. I'm married, uh, two wives, two, two children. Mm. Um, we understand that black family is the, the core 
of course, Tugu uh, as a people. And now I'm part of the Afrocentrist International, the error organization with uh, division and chapters. <coughs> Sorry. Take <Thanks>, time. <laughs> uh, around the world. So we have a division here in Brazil. Uh, some people in different states here. Brazil is a huge country, <clears throat> just like the U.S. Okay. It will take a lot of time to to go from a seed to other and state to other here in Brazil. And we are trying to to uh, build schools here and uh, promote the African Renaissance. That's our main goal. Uh, to the Afrocentric International. Excellent, excellent. That's a lot of work. And it seems like you were raised in this type of work. You know, you have some people like myself, uh, as an activist, I wasn't raised as one, but, you know, as I got older and I saw some of the needs of my community, and what I wanted to do to improve or upon those needs or actually provide those needs, you know, then I started doing the work. But it seems like you come from a family like that. Um, some a way. Uh, in fact, uh, that's why we choose. We have a, a, a few families coming together to, to work. Uh, the movement here, the movement here, do not create a kind of transgenerational, uh, transgenerational transmission of the struggle. So my father was a militant activist, but um, uh, he was uh, he, he passed away uh, fifteen years ago. But he he uh, wasn't. He won path, his own path, and uh, I didn't grew up in an uh, organization here because uh, the organization, the black organizations here in Brazil was very focused in, in to, to um, access the, the government and the states and they uh, Austin uh, didn't uh, work at with the youth, and we have few schools, we have a uh, few um, space to people get together and have some kind of uh, social. Um, so my English is very uh, uh, bad, but uh, I'm English is to, better than my Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to say that uh, we need to focus uh, in in put our people together in a, uh, in a daily basis, like uh, Marcus Garvey did, and our movement here. Uh, uh, not always working that perspective. So my father was a, a reference, he's a reference to me, but I didn't learn uh, the struggle from then directly. So uh, I need to grow up uh, and see for myself and then engage myself in the struggle. But uh, my father and mother choose Swahili because uh, uh, choose Swahili uh, baptized me mm -hmm. Swahili when I burn. So uh, have a name here. Brazil is a very very black country. Uh, we are 15, 15 two percent of the population here, but there is no. Uh, a presence of the African conscience here and have an African name was very strange to people here 
when I grew up 20 years ago. So uh, they, of course, uh, give me the, the, the torch and I'm uh, passing it for the, the future generations. They, they, they did their good work, but it was, wasn't a, a systematic approach to, to give me an environment, a, an organization, uh, and then it is what we're trying to create now. We have almost 10 children among our families, and we trying to put them together, to, to be raised together, uh, as opposed to Afrocentric context, uh, content, uh, and of course, fight the racism. That's awesome. Like the, the 10 families, um, 10 people in the families coming together to build seemingly institutionalized things that will help to fight against you know, racism and just the injustice that African people face. Now you mentioned something uh, just now, you said that Brazil is 52% of Brazil is black. Yeah. That, and it's interesting because we don't really get to see that. Like <clears throat> being in the States, you don't see uh, Brazil, people from Brazil who look like me or who may look, you're a little lighter, but like may look a little lighter than you, you, you may see, but you don't really see like uh, the brothers and sisters in Brazil that are dark skinned, you know? Um, so just, can you touch on a little bit of how the media plays in Brazil with regards to the images that they, that they show there? Uh, Brazil is on the, uh, racist system uh, perhaps stronger than apartheid because mm -hmm. um, and Abidias do Nascimento uh, wrote about it there is a book called uh, Mixture or Massacre uh, Mistura or Massacre uh, that uh, his plans hold the uh, white people here in Brazil is a minority, but they uh, use historically strategies to, to, to get the control of the country uh, and uh, over the people using rape, violence, uh, and this so-called uh, racial democracy. Here in Brazil, a lot of black people don't believe themselves black, uh, Africans, wow. and the media is um, the result of centuries this uh, kind of discourse being uh, produced and uh, sell to the people here. So there's a lot of black people here that they say they are Morenos. Morenos is um, like by Hazel. By ah, okay. here. So, okay, I I'm, I'm have two, three ancestors. So I'm not really black, but in, in fact, in the, in the day of life, here in Brazil, uh, black people is uh, the poorest, the, the, uh, have men, uh, have uh, lesser access to, to rights here, mm. uh, access to education, to health care. And there's a lot of uh, dark skin brothers and sisters here. Brazil is, is very black. I have opportunity to. I had opportunity to, to go to Philadelphia, mm -hmm. Philadelphia, Industry. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Salvador is blacker than Philadelphia. So we have uh, more black people and more uh, 
dark and dark skin and uh, no no um, mixtures, features in wow. the people. But the media don't have interest to to, to show it. And Brazil is portrayed uh, internally and externally uh, as a European country, because there is a project. The government made plans to to uh, bring Europeans to here to replace the the the, uh, the people of the country. So they. Invest, invest, invested money for for centuries for decades to to uh, make the Brazil white, um, just like uh, Argentina did. But in Argentina, they had some more success success than here. Uh -huh. That's it. Sounds familiar to what happened here because you had <clears throat> during I believe it was the Homestead Act. So when Europeans uh, first came into the country of the United States and how uh, the enslaved African population was well outnumbered uh, the whites that were here. So what they would do is they would bring Europeans in and uh, offer them land grant or give them land grants and help them to go out uh, west, the Midwest to the west and claim those lands and it ended up whitening the population here in the United States. And I know when I traveled abroad, um, they people who I encountered would always tell me like, oh, you know, I, I'm thinking that America is just this, uh, or the United States is just this white country. And, you know, there might be a small, every so often they may see black people there, but they don't um, think of the United States as like, you know, a people who, who got melanin and African people in the United States, they don't see them there. So uh, the same thing, it sounds like in Brazil, I know when I was there, you know, I do other research. So I kind of figured that Brazil, you know, was mainly black, but the images that you get from Brazil isn't that. So when you're saying that, you know, they're bringing essentially immigrants in to whiten up the population, is it, it just goes along the lines of what the media has done not only here in the United States, but also in Brazil, it sounds. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we are facing a global problem as a people, and perhaps Brazil is the most successful uh, racist country in the world. I, uh, re uh, I read and studied the uh, US history Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the black people in the U.S. Uh, facing, is facing, was facing a lot of problems. But here in Brazil, um, the, the, the white people in the power uh, had this kind of trickery that they still have a racial power, but they uh, was able to disguise it in another uh, kind of uh, excuses. Uh, let's give me an example. Uh -huh. um, the black people in the US start to vote, uh, to have the right to vote in- The civil uh, rights movement. Civil rights movement. Uh, yeah. 1965. Yes, it's 1965. 64. 64. Okay. Here in Brazil, uh, the majority of the people uh, was wasn't able to vote in until uh, 1988. 1988. That's when I was born. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but here in Brazil, there is no law saying black people. Uh, uh, can vote, but uh, the lo the laws say the illiterate illiter illiterate people uh, who can read and write uh, is not uh, able to vote. But uh, 
Indian descendant people and African descendant people was the majority of the illiterate. So, um, 67 percent uh, uh, of the population was wasn't able to vote. Just thirty percent or forty percent was able to vote here. So. Uh, in Brazil, they always um, keep black people outside of the civil rights, but they, they don't say black people can do that. They create excuses to, to keep, keep us outside. You know, and this is one thing I want to highlight because last time we talked to Raiz and he was talking about Portugal and how Portugal, of course, Portugal colonized Brazil too, but how Portugal um, has racist laws as well and policies to where it's locking out uh, African people that are there, the black folks that are there. And here in the States, like those laws that you're talking about, or at least those policies that you're talking about, um, were like a form of black codes, uh, what we call here, as well as different mechanisms that were in place to make sure that uh, we couldn't vote. So like the literacy laws that you're talking about, you know, you have they wouldn't come out to say that black people can't vote in Brazil, but you need to be able to read and write. Here, it was the same exact thing. Like if they won't come out and say you can't vote, but what they'll do is they'll do uh, poll taxes where you may have to pay or um, you know, the same literacy uh, type of uh, laws where you would have to be able to read and to write. And then now in the modern day, they have what's called uh, voter ID laws that they're attempting to pass, where you would have to show an ID in order to vote. So these are things that they're setting up in place to prevent black folks from voting here and you're saying the same exact thing happened in Brazil? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I don't believe in coincidence. So these guys, they are talking with each other and elaborate a uh, uh, domination plan, a domination is come to keep us uh, under control. And we need a kind of universal uh, uh, force that we need to connect our people uh, worldwide to respond to these attacks because uh, we are attacked, uh, we, we are under attack uh, globally, so we need to respond globally too. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, with the population of Brazil being essentially so black, like how I read, I read an article that talked about how I think it was every 15 minutes, someone in Brazil or someone black in Brazil dies. And I believe it was by the cops it may have just been violently. I know here in the United States, there was a study that happened. I think it was 2014 that said every 28 hours, um, a black man was shot and killed by the police. So is it true about the 15, every 15 minute um, yeah. bit in the article? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brazil is facing a uh, racial war and we have um, a percentage of tax of violent deaths higher than, the, than Syria and Syria is wow. in the war. So uh, if you get the official state, state, states, you get the numbers, the official numbers of the violent deaths by gunfire in Brazil uh, since the Syrian war started in the Middle, middle West, Brazil is uh, killing the hate uh, Killing people uh, in, in a hate uh, 
great uh, great hate in Syria. So we don't have a, a war situation uh, recognized by the uh, international organized organizations, your organizations. But the, the reality here in the communities uh, is very bad. A lot of people been been killed by police, by groups uh, uh, that we call militias. Mm -hmm. This is kind of paramilitary groups. They are um, feeded by the 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 security forces here, by the policy, the, the army, whatever. Mm -hmm. And of course we have um, the, uh, what they call factions, factions, as, mm -hmm. uh, so kind of drug dealers, uh, drug dealers groups here, killing people too. Uh, and we have some of the high highest uh, inca incarcer incarceration tax in the world. So we have uh, first the U.S. after I believe it's China, and we are the key ones in the world. So uh, wow, the, that, that's one of the way that the wanted to to white whitening whitening Brazil so they have the media they have this theological construct about uh uh to light in your skin uh look for a light of partners uh, to marry or to have children and you have the killings are killing a lot of uh, black youth, black men, uh, black boys. We had two weeks ago a uh, babe of, uh, I think the baby had uh, one month, uh, uh, two months, year, two months, year old, and the Police just uh, shoot uh, uh, a two month year old. Uh, shoot uh, a device for gas. Uh, tear gas. Yeah, and it hit the the children in, in his home, and he he it it, it was here in Salvador. And the baby was killed in the result of this action of the police here. So the government and the, the police chief, uh, anyone care about it, we denounce, we uh, have had march, uh, uh, had fight. This situation, but it's very hard. Uh, the people understand that uh, the media have a, a, a role, an important role on it because uh, black people saw the TV shows, uh, the journalistic programs on TV mm -hmm. saying that uh, themselves and the community are criminals and some some uh, some way people start to believe it and it's not in common here uh if someone was killed by the police here or killed by the the draft the, the drug dealers uh people start to think that the people was involved in criminal activity so uh, they start to, to believe that the killing was just, just fired. Wow. So what part of our work is to, to uh, bring our people together and 
strength the, the bonds among us in our communities to, to give us uh, a right, righteous uh, perception of ourselves. Uh, and is what you're talking about, like I said, is no different than what we experience here. The fact that if a um, black man or black woman is shot by the cops, then uh, there's a media campaign that happens and they it's like clockwork. They get shot by the cops. You know, there's marching and then there's protesting. There's a call for the officer who did it to be um, have some type of charges brought against him. Uh, charges may or may not be filed. If charges are filed and the officer more likely than not will uh, be acquitted or the, the charges will be dropped or if um, or the charges just uh, doesn't come at all. But there's still this negative connotation of, you know, the, the person who was shot was, you know, uh, doing drugs, you know, had a criminal history and background. Or if they can't get that person, then they'll go through the family and say, oh, well, you know, the father was a drug dealer or in jail. You know, the mother was, you know, a coke addict or whatever the case may be. They'll, they'll attempt to, to bring out uh, that part, you know, uh, through the media to just run their name through the mud, you know. And how that, so how do you, as a professor and as someone in education, how do you go about changing the narrative or helping uh, people, our people in the community there in Salvador and in Brazil as a whole to understand what's going on and what they should do to help our situation out there? Yeah, we, we started a uh, uh, free course in the university. Uh, it was um, ha, has ha, ha, have its public is teachers of the uh, public system. Um, we receive a hundred of teachers. Fifty uh, was from here, Salvador, and the metropolitan area and 50 was from uh, a lot of country, or oh, sorry, a lot of states here in Brazil. And we trying to, to uh, put uh, people in touch because there's a lot of good things uh, has been done in the schools. But uh, usually the teachers that have interest to uh, change the narrative are are isolated. So we, uh, our main focus is put the, these people together. Now we have this group of teachers. We just uh, finish our first class, first uh, group last year, and we start another group this year. And we stood after history, after history here in Brazil. Uh, history of the African diaspora and try to, to pick this um, uh, propaganda and and black propaganda and still it uh, understand and confront it on, in our class and it's uh, had be a, a good movement because there's a lot of uh, things being done by the the teachers in this group, we believe that uh, uh, soon we uh, you bring the children, the students together through. So we are uh, hoping to start a, a bigger movement uh, in the public schools here. Uh, it lasts in Salvador. That's excellent because I know education is really big with regards to just changing the image or your mentality of how you think about yourself. And um, here, you know, the a lot of the education or the knowledge of self isn't taught 
in the public schools. So you may get this sort of slave narrative about uh, what's going on. And even during this time, you get a lot of history of what happened to us here in the United States from uh, captivity, you know, up to present. But you don't get a lot of information about what happened prior to captivity, you know, when we were um, in Africa and things of the kind. Now, with your movement, is there like any type of brushback or um, anything from the school system that hinders you from attempting to push this type of positive um, education? Yeah, uh, our work is mainly uh, to create a resource and plans and exchange experience of the people in the ground, in the, the classroom, uh, about who, who uh, sorry, who you can to teach uh, our history uh, inside the, the official syllabus. Because um, some, sometimes we have a lot of information, but we don't have uh, how to, to uh, do the infusion of our own narrative in this curriculum, in the school silos. So our work is uh, bring people together and uh, help uh, each other to, to uh, make this infusion in the uh, dial teaching and learning process in the classroom. So uh, it, uh, we, we have, uh, we are in the first uh, step of our journey, but we have some success uh, happening right now. So the teachers are in touch and they uh, start to, to do projects together and the things um, just uh, extrapolate, just uh, are outside of the classroom, the, the course classroom, and they are work together. That was our main objective originally. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I hope uh, give you uh, uh, this year, some of our uh, results because we are trying to put it online to to uh, spread it for other teachers around the world or other black teachers around the world. Yeah, and uh, that would that would be really dope to actually have like this this group of teachers internationally. <clears throat> that would be able to be on the same page with the curriculum, teaching the same curriculum of uh, our true history and culture um, prior to captivity and, uh, and to now, but from a perspective of empowerment, you know, cause you do have schools that are, you know, teaching it in their individual capacities, but to have like a global structure where we can do that. And then you have uh, some folks from the States go down to Brazil and then some folks from Brazil come up to the States just to do kind of like a circuit type of thing. Uh, that would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing. Now, when I was there last time, I remember you and I were talking about, um, I think it was homeschooling and is and it being uh, elite, is, is it illegal there? Yeah, uh, it's illegal, but... Um... <laughs> Uh, now we, we are change a uh, major political, uh, uh, we, we, ha we are having a political change, a major political change here. And the, the actual federal government was elect, uh, uh, this guy called Jair Bolsonaro. Uh, he, the past president or is that the current president? The current, uh, he, his office started uh, in January, okay. so last month. 
and they uh, they have interest to promote the homeschool here in Brazil, but it uh, uh, it is associated to uh, some uh, perspective to to uh, defund the fund. Withdraw the funds of the public system, so they want to to use the homeschool and the authorized it here in Brazil to uh, uh, to to pay lesser to the the schools to have uh, to to give less uh, less uh, money to the school system here. Uh, and it's um, a problem to us because uh, the majority of the black people here have don't don't have means to to uh, provide their own education, and uh, we are studying how uh, we can respond to to it because uh, wherever the the political parties ruling the state we need to build our own institutions we, we need to build give our, to our people our own education and we are trying to figure out how to respond to these uh, changes of the legislation but uh, the view is in the in the the camera you know, so to have this, this, uh, the the Congress men and women oh, yeah. are uh, voting the bill now, and uh, the the, the so-called president will sign the this law this month, I believe. Okay, and it look does it look like it's going to pass? I believe so. I believe so, but uh, we don't have. The, the the means to to uh, take advantage of it now the black people here don't have and, it, it, and it's bad because we don't we don't control the schools in our communities and we don't have the means to do our own education uh, through Roman schooling so we have a lot of work to do here wow. all I can say is that this is the exact same thing that's happening here you know, no, no control of the schools in your neighborhoods um, here because I do uh, teach special, uh, not teach, because I practice special education law and education law. Um, you see just the complete gutting of a lot of the uh, schools here and the switching it to charter schools, which do not, it, it does not necessarily help our cause because there's really no oversight, but at the end of the day, it goes back to what you said, just about owning, operating, and controlling our own institutions and specifically our own schools, because then, you know, we write the narrative of it. And studies have been shown that black kids that are taught um, black, by black teachers positive curriculum, so curriculum that teaches them about their own uh, history, culture, uh, and it just empowers them, do way better than those, you know, that don't. So um, the fight continues down there with education. Right? And uh, the last the last topic I wanted to ask you about is here we have this thing, gentrification, where you have a lot of, you know, uh, people outside of our communities coming in buying up properties uh, and then raising uh, the taxes on it, or excuse me, raising the, the, the prices of the properties, the taxes going up, and essentially it pushes uh, black folks out of the community and then they are kind of locked out of it because they can't afford to be in it anymore. And then the whole community changes, the neighborhood name may change, so it may look completely different than what you, know, um, you recognize growing up. Does Brazil have the same issue down there? Yeah, Liru, but uh, here in Brazil, we have um, a kind of uh, 
I, I told to you and to the audience about the militias. Mm -hmm. The militias are these paramilitary groups. Uh, some some uh, media vehicles are saying that the the family of the current president is backed backed uh, uh, have the support of the militias and the the older son of the president that is now a, a senator here in Brazil he was late elected to senator order uh, the actual president older son uh, uh, seems to have a close relationship with the militias uh, that's what the the newspapers are saying and here in Brazil uh, we have gentrification just like US some people buying uh, uh, house in the hood but uh, in general uh, the light in Brazil use the state power to do it so uh, the they have a kind of project and the government go there and uh, spell people and pay them just a, a, a minimal fee a minimal refund for the house and sometimes they build uh, some projects um, uh, outside the the urban uh, area mm -hmm. uh, in area uh, without uh, a good um, transportation, uh, a good public illumination, and just put people there and occupy the neighborhood, and then they sell it for they give information privilege, uh, privilege information for uh, the uh, partners and uh, these partners buy anything uh, so we we have here a kind of gentrification that was more violent because they use the the people's money the tax money uh, to to spare our people and uh, Brazil had a, a law uh, that uh, was uh, vigoring was um, uh, working uh, for many decades uh, that forbidding black people to buy land here so a lot of communities don't have papers to uh, uh, present their own propriety. Uh, people who uh, build house or, or uh, little farms, but they don't have the paper that uh, proves to the government that this land is, is so they are spelled by the government. Wow, and that's even if they've owned the land or they've been on the land for like decades? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We have now uh, here in Salvador, uh, uh, next Salvador, a uh, uh, community called Quilombo dos Rios Macacos. It's, it's a Quilombo, uh, it's uh, a community, of, a maroon community from uh, uh, people that fight the slavery and uh build this community uh and the the uh nave have uh, uh headquarters next to this community and so, so the nave the brazilian nave uh is now trying to spell them and there's a major conflict that because they don't have papers to to prove that they live there but they are uh, there for generations, no. That's crazy. Um, Do they have any, like, um, are, are there any, say, legal experts or anybody within the law? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of movements trying to support and legal experts. They, uh, 
we had a campaign to, to support the Quilombo dos Rios Macacos. But um, here in Brazil, it's difficult because the law it's very it's it's uh, uh, the the elite here uh, follow the law when it's they have interest, but it's very easy here to to uh, break the law and if if you are powerful, you have the right connections, you have the right color, uh, so that's it. Uh, we need we need to to build our own institutions and fight back in the same uh, language of them. As uh, Home Mokwax, Honorable Mokwax said, power uh, just uh, least in power. So we need power too. So true. So true. So. <laughs> Yeah, do you have any like final words as far as what you think that we should do uh, here in the United States? So even anybody that's watching, like how can we help to support uh, what you do down in Salvador and specifically uh, or generally in Brazil? Yeah, uh, how I say, uh, I'm a member of Afro Centrist International. Now we have a campaign to build a, a temple, and no, I don't, 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 don't say how to say it in English, but mm -hmm. it's a temple and you'll be a, 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 a place to uh, the members of the Afrocentrist uh, go to training, to exchange experience in Ivory Coast. So our organization, uh, have uh, conventions annu annually. So uh, this year our convention will be in Ivory Coast, which just uh, finishing this this temple there, and we have a campaign to to uh, uh, build it uh, to to, bu to build it a uh, community in Ivory Coast. Just uh, uh, give you uh, Ivory Coast, oh. yes, Costa do Mafia. Thank you. Uh, give you us land, and we had we have this land, and uh, we had people here in Brazil, in Caribe, um, Car Caribe, yeah. Caribe, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Europe, in US, uh, in whole continent, South Africa, Cameroon, uh, Ivory Coast. Uh, uh, pull her shoes together to, to build it. So uh, now we are um, um, uh, in this major project together. And if you want, uh, I will give the link to you uh, if, yeah, if yeah. possible. If you want to have to contribute to uh, our struggle, uh, because we believe that the next generation uh, need to do uh, more frequently what you are doing with the Sabre, uh, that visit our countries, connect people, we need to uh, uh, stick together as people globally, we need to invest in it. Uh, Sometimes people think to travel and make connections uh, uh, is a kind of uh, fun or laser but it's not, it's a business, it's a, a good power. So I'm glad to share with you. Um, again, sorry for my English. I hope uh, people can understand me. Are you good? Uh, perhaps the next generation will speak in Swahili or in Yoruba and <laughs> we have a, a major global language, uh, our language. But uh, what's our honor to exchange with you, my brother, and your audience, I, I wish us success and we'll say Marcus Gav on arm on people. Ah, uh, Ashe, Brother, thank you so much, uh, Asante Sana, for you know blessing us uh, and telling us exactly what's going on in Brazil. The final uh, thing I would ask of you is tell the people, share with the audience 
you know, how to get in contact with you if they wanted to uh, follow up with you, like Insta, um, social media, or like, yeah, all like that use Facebook and Instagram, Gabriel Swahili. You can follow me or add me. Um, I have my email, Swahili dash, I hope, I hope. Mm -hmm. Opa, Ufba. Uh, I'll put it, I'll write it all down too. Okay, that's cool. uh, yeah. uh, and of course, I'm interested to exchange with brothers and sisters that are like mining uh, in the African sovereignty and African liberation struggle. So, you all are welcome. Excellent, excellent. Once again, thank you, brother, so much for coming on. You know, I'm gonna have all of uh, Brother Kim Swahili's information underneath this video. So if you have any questions or, you know, comments, leave that. Uh, once again, that was Brother uh, Gabriel Kim Swahili out of Salvador, Brazil. I'm attorney Talib Saber from the Saber Firm. We'll see you soon.